Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to do it in English because I don't know a word in German, but I agree with everything Katya said. Um, so my name is Yotam. Uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, Webits. And I'm going to share with you a bit what we are doing. And in the end, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask. So 11 March 1702 was a very special date. It was the date that the first newspaper was published. It was named the Daily Current, and it was published in the UK. <clears throat> but since then, a lot has changed in the media. And we are consuming content. If you think about it, we're consuming content almost the same way. So we took the text of a newspaper, and we just put it on a small device or an iPhone. So at Webits, we thought there is a better way to consume content. So we develop a technology that can take any textual content and turn that into a video automatically. So we basically can take any textual article, a news article, and in five to 10 seconds, have a video ready. So you probably ask yourself, how does it look like? How do you turn text into video? So I prepared a quick demo of one of the publishers we work with. And this is an article taken from Focus. And after it runs through our platform, this is what comes out. Sie dürfen natürlich Freunden und der Familie sagen, dass sie bei Apple arbeiten, aber nicht, wie sie an den Job gekommen sind, was sie verdienen und erst recht nicht, woran sie arbeiten. Wenige Tage später kam das Jobangebot per Telefon und Brad sagte zu, bevor sie überhaupt irgendetwas von Bezahlung gesagt haben. Dabei hätte Brad da bestimmt gerne zugehört. Er bekam nach eigenen Angaben einen Stundenlohn von 38 Dollar, das sind umgerechnet rund 34 Euro. Das Beste, Überstunden werden bei Apple nicht nur ebenfalls bezahlt, sondern sogar mit dem anderthalbfachen Stundensatz. Brads Angaben decken sich mit denen der Karriereseite Glassdoor, auf der Angestellte anonym ihr Gehalt posten können. Apple gibt seinen Praktikanten sogar noch einen kostenlosen WG-Platz im Silicon Valley obendrauf. Es gibt sogar spezielle Seminare für neue Mitarbeiter, um sie auf diese Firmenphilosophie einzuschwören und die Situation weniger peinlich zu machen, wenn Freunde und Familie einen über den neuen Job ausfragen. Cool, right? <laughs> so, I don't want to get too much technical on how the algorithm works, but just in high level uh, we use a lot of NLP, which is natural language process to understand text and understand what the text is talking about. So our algorithm analyzes the text, understand what happened in the article, who did what, where it happened. After that, we summarize the article. So the videos will be very short in the end, around one minute length. Then we visualize it using images, video footage, and infographics for specific data. And then we turn the text into speech. You can, see, you can use our text-to-speech engine or uh, have a narrator narrate the clip itself. So all this process is 100% automatically. It takes us between five seconds to 10 seconds to generate a clip. And we do it in a very, very scalable way. So today we already produce more than 10,000 videos every day. Uh, so the algorithm is very, very scalable. And what we are focusing at Webits is on scale. We mainly work with publishers, with the content owners, and the goal there is to help publishers generate videos in a scalable manner. So if you think about a publisher, today to create a video, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money. Once you have the video ready, it's not relevant anymore because the news are updating all the time. And we created kind of like a video engine that can take all the existing textual articles of a publisher and automatically turn them into a video experience with their brand. So as a publisher, it's super simple. You add one line of Webits code to your site, and then we automatically turn all your articles into videos. Then you can monetize those videos using pre-roll ads that worth 10 to 15 times more than any other ad. So the process for a publisher is analyzing the text, creating the summary of the clip, we visualize it using images and video footage that we license. So all the videos and the media that we are using are licensed from Getty, Reuters, AFP. And you can have the voiceover either, like I said before, text-to-speech or narrate the clip itself. 
As a publisher, what we know also is publishers need the control on their content. They don't want to have everything automatically. So we, we created a control room, the Webits control room for publishers. So you get all the videos already made for your articles. Every article that is being published automatically gets a video ready. And then if you want to fine tune those videos, you can do it pretty easily. Just by clicking on specific video, you get a storyboard and you can switch images, upload your own images, and have the voiceover, change the text, do whatever you want. But the video is already ready. So you have 95%, let's say, of the work done. And if you want, you can just fine tune it and upload the clip. You can also just put text in our system and we'll create a video just from the text. So you put the headline, you type in the text, click on create, 10 seconds, you have a video and you can publish it on your site. So the benefits for publishers are pretty obvious, I guess. Uh, they get tons of video in a very, very costly and uh, scalable way. They can then monetize them using in-video ads. Uh, the user engagement, user love video, so they stay more on your site. They share the videos, which get ranked higher on social networks. And for example, for breaking news video, when you have a breaking news article, usually you don't have a video ready yet. So using our technology, you can have a video out there in 10 seconds and update it when the story updates. A bit about the company, about Webits. So we founded the company four years ago as part of an entrepreneurship program uh, while we are still students at college. Um, and since the last four years, we grew up the company. We are currently 25 people in the company. We have offices in Tel Aviv. I'm based in Tel Aviv. An office in New York. Um, the reason for that is mainly to focus on the media business. We are growing pretty rapidly now. <laughs> so we're adding one or two publishers every week, uh, which is great. Uh, we want to partner with as many publishers as we can. We have Webits Embed Code already embedded on 160 million pages per month, and we have millions of videos viewed per month, and it's growing, like I said, uh, nicely. Uh, we managed to raise so far a bit uh, over $11 million. Um, the main investor is Horizons Ventures. I don't know if everybody knows them. It's a private equity fund of uh, Li Kaxing from Hong Kong. And we got an investment a few months ago of $8 million uh, from Nant Mobile from LA. And uh, so it helps us a lot to boost up the business uh, today. And as a company, our vision is, a, I'll say, pretty big vision. But we see Webits as kind of like the play button for the web. So no matter where you are, no matter what device you'll have on you, if it's an iPhone, if it's a watch, if it's a connected TV, we want to have the Webits play button there. And when you see text, you will be able to just click play and lean back and watch any text brought to life instead of reading the text. So this is our vision. We're doing it step by step. And, but this is the vision of the company. Um, I want to talk, we are talking here about mobile and media, and I see from all the conferences and the working with a lot of publishers that we work with, we see a lot of trends coming out, so I think it's a good place to share those trends with you. Uh, this is my, my perspective on how the consumption of media will be and where it's heading, and so I want to share a few trends. So first of all, obviously mobile video. Uh, users watch more and more videos on the mobile device. Uh, and generally, they see and watch and watch more and more videos today. So you can see the rise of the consumption of, vi of video. But not only that, you see that 33% of those video consumption is done on mobile devices, either tablets or mobile devices. So it was doubled in the last years, like a year after year it was doubled. And people consume more and more videos on their mobile devices because the mobile screen also becomes a bit bigger and reading text is not the best experience you can have on mobile devices. So people consume more and more videos. Another trend you can see is different types of videos. So if we had, in the beginning, we saw the TV videos coming to the internet and using the same concept of a TV breaking news on mobile devices and on the internet, you see today different types of videos being played. This is an example of something we're going to release soon. It's, it doesn't use any narration, but mainly uses the text of the, to of the story to tell the story.
So the idea is to tell you the message in a very fast way, but you can also get the message without even using the sound, because a lot of the consumption of video today on mobile is done without sound, because there you are with other people, and then we use text and we show the main text of the story, uh, like you saw in the clip itself. There is a lot of different types of platform they want to work together. I think publisher becomes stronger in the last few months or year because a lot of platforms want to work with publisher. So you saw Facebook releasing the instant uh, view of an article and now they are partnering up with publishers to show that content. You have the in-stream video. So people consume a lot of videos on the in-stream of Facebook. Uh, so it really changed the way people consume videos. So a lot of publishers as well started to have autoplay videos, autoplay videos in, in mute. Uh, this is something that you see happens as well. I don't know if all of you saw, but the Snapchat Discover, I guess you saw it. It's a really different type of uh, consumption of content, very young, very fast, uh, very, very tailor-made to the Snapchat experience. And another thing that I think they really started to innovate, and we'll see where it's heading, but consumption of videos in a vertical mode. So you have today also Periscope, and you have a, a Meerkat that are live streaming in vertical. Uh, so this will be very interesting to see if people will start to consume videos and, and uh, uh, live streaming in vertical and not just a uh, landscape. And I think all of that leads publisher uh, to something I call programmatic content. Uh, if you think about the way it happened with the ad tech, so all the ad tech today on publisher sites is being done by machines. And I think that publishers should step in also to machines in terms of creating content, uh, which is what we are doing. <laughs> but I really believe this is a next step for publishers to cut on on expenses and to move fast and create content in scale. Uh, so I think programmatic content and adding robots to your newsroom, which is very, very hard to do, to, especially for editors, I think it's something that uh, needs to be done on, on publisher places, and, and we see more and more publishers understand that. So I come from Tel Aviv, and I want to share with you a bit of what's going on there. I don't know who have been here in Tel Aviv and knows the... Yeah. <laughs> so we've been in Tel Aviv here. Okay. Ah, nice. So almost 10 people. So uh, there are a lot of things going on in Tel Aviv and in Israel. I don't know if you know the book Startup Nation, but I just want to share with you a bit of just a glimpse of what's going on there. Um, so what you see here is a map, it's named Mapped in Israel. It's a very young guy, I know him, he's 17. He created this venture and they actually mapped all the startups in Tel Aviv. So in Israel in general, but this area is only Tel Aviv. There is, just in Tel Aviv, there is over 3,000 startups. And I can tell you that all my friends <laughs> are in some way connected to a startup. And uh, there are tons of startup. Uh, we have about 15 accelerators. Every big company from Samsung to AOL opens, and opens an accelerator in Israel uh, for startups. Um, there is a lot of investors, a lot of second time and third time entrepreneurs that invest in startup as angels, but also as VCs. I guess there are at least 50 or 100 VCs in Israel. A lot of investment coming from China, from Russia. It started to go into Israel, and a lot of big companies opening an R&D centers in Israel, like Apple, Facebook, and all the big ones. Google has free buildings in, in Israel. And I don't know if all of you know it, but the ecosystem of innovation and startups in Israel, and especially in Tel Aviv, is, is really booming. Uh, so anyone that is interested in that, I really recommend uh, stopping by in Tel Aviv and seeing what's going on there. I can help out with that if you need. Uh, so thank you very much. I uh, will be happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, thanks. <laughs>